You might have heard the term SUV, sports utility vehicle. Well, this is our FEV, our family exploration vehicle. And that's what we really think of it as. Some people like the, the mud bashing and the bush bashing just for the sake of that. For us, it's more about the capability and the practicality of being able to get to beautiful and remote places. Welcome back to Out There with Dan. This year, we're gonna be talking more about four-wheel driving and camping. So I thought I'd better show you the vehicle that I've got. You've seen it in the background on videos, but I haven't really gone through anything in detail. So in this one, I'd like to show you our 2001 Land Cruiser Prado diesel automatic Grande 3 liter uh, 1KZ TE. Let's go. Run, run. What? Run, quick. Go. It's chasing us. <laughs> she was actually chasing us. The car's done about 400,000 kilometres. Underneath the bonnet, it's pretty well stock. We haven't done much to it. The three litre turbo diesel um, direct intercooled is enough for what we need. Even if we tow something later, I don't imagine a really big caravan or anything. So it's probably gonna suit us forever. The Sometimes when we're on hills um, on the bitumen and we're fully loaded up i would like a bit more power sometimes but all in all it does what we need it to we've been really lucky with its reliability too when we got it in 2017 in the glove box it looked like it had a basically a full engine replacement in darwin so the previous owner got unlucky on their trip of australia and got stuck up there and had to spend um, it was over ten thousand dollars doing engine work so I think we reaped the benefits of that because we only got it sort of 50,000 K later. Um, it was leaking coolant a little bit for a while and we didn't really get to the bottom of it. Um, and so we're sort of, we sort of know at some point, maybe the engine's gonna go and we're gonna be in strife. But at the moment for what the car's worth and it's, it's still going strong and we're gonna, we're gonna keep running it. That's why it's important to look after old vehicles and and service them well and if you treat them well you know they'll they'll treat you well back and then as things need to be replaced you just accept it and you're still going to be better off than sort of the purchase price of a new car and the risks there's still risks involved in, involved in all cars isn't there we've got a second battery here so this is just to power the fridge and auxiliary and we've got a really simple uh, solenoid to protect the starter motor and and charge this battery while while we're driving but apart from that it's pretty basic in here Go on. I'm able to change the oil and the fuel filter the air filter I know what to do with the coolant and a couple of other things, but I haven't had a great deal of experience pulling apart cars and, and whatnot. My family always got our vehicles serviced uh, by a mechanic. And I, when I was growing up, I was into music and video games and not pulling apart cars. So full disclosure there. Um, but the next five to 10 years of my life, I've taken more of an interest in this. So I'm plan on learning and this is a perfect car to do it because there's limited electronics like there is with a with a modern car so so yeah full disclosure there i'm not a not a petrol head start at the front on the exterior and work our way back and then we'll have a look inside this bull bar came on it it looks like an ARB bull bar but it doesn't have the brand on it I suspect it's a ripoff we recently put this uh, Runva 9,000 pound winch on we're not tying anything so 9,000 pound was enough 
it's more an insurance policy because we're off, I'm often cruising around um, without another vehicle. And I just feel like for the cost of a year's insurance and what it would cost to tow yourself out of some of the places I'd like to go and the places I do go, then that's um, an important insurance. These old Nava lights were on there as well. One day I'll probably look at replacing those, but I don't do much night driving. And again, it's more if I do get stuck at night and I do need to get somewhere, then at least I've got something extra. So there's a spot and a loom. This is a UHF a basic one from Autobahn. Um, the antenna does what we need it to do. It's connected to a very cheap uh, UHF radio inside as well. In the future, we'll look at getting a better one. I really like the look of the GME Australian made ones. The small 2 dBi aerials would, would suit us really good. It's just an expenditure I'm not willing to make at the moment, but um, in the future on this vehicle or another, I do see the value in having a good radio. There's one big one at the start where a couple of European backpackers managed to drown their SUV. And Moving down here, underneath, uh, you can't, probably can't see them from there, got these recovery points that I've added. So it just had the factory um, like tie down points or the toe points, which aren't suitable for uh, doing a recovery on. They're a really cheap um, item to get. So if you, if you buy a full drive and you're going anywhere for like 50 or 100 bucks for a set um, and they're relatively easy to fit or get a mechanic to fit them. It's a really important feature to have. Pretty hard to come by on the Prados now. So I had to look on eBay, is it road safe? And all the big manufacturers didn't make them anymore. So I'm, I'm starting to find that now the parts for the, or well, the aftermarket accessories for the Prado are starting to diminish a bit for the 90 series. Moving on to the, the tires, we've got, um, BF Goodrich All Terrains, the KO2s. When we um, bought it, it had uh, sort of hodgepodge tires on the on the back. They weren't really a road, but they weren't really an all-terrain. And it had a couple of these on. They were slightly oversized. So this is 275, 70, 16. And so they're normally 265, uh, 70, 16 out of the factory. And because for financial reasons, we didn't want to replace all of them. We went with the same tire size and just replaced the back two. So we've always, only ever bought two at a time. And we've got to a point now where we've got the two spares, which are also the same one. So economically we've replaced two at a time. And because of that, we were forced to go with the size that we had at the start. Highly rate these BF Goodriches. Um, they're just really good, really, really good tire. The 90 series Prado had independent suspension at the front. Ours has been uh, replaced with aftermarket suspension, uh, you know, coil and shock. And um, it looks like a cheap, cheap job as well. It's got a two inch lift as well, um, which we find really handy. And, you know, we've been with vehicles that don't, and then it's pretty clear the advantage of just having that extra couple of um, couple of inches also with the slightly oversized tire the 275 compared to the factory 265 is slightly wider but because the the whole um because the 70 creates the ratio it's slightly a slightly larger tire as well so i think the tire is a 31 and a half inch plus the two inch lift and it's just enough to make everything a bit more comfortable off-road without being ridiculously high on the road so we really like it 
The ball joints and control arms are classic weak points on the Prados. Once they start getting the Ks up, I've been sure to proactively replace them. Suspension's definitely on the cards for us to upgrade. Um, it's just a matter of what and when. Um, I'll talk more about that in, in a bit. Here's some people here we're gonna give a good wave to. We got the finger, which is this one off the steering wheel. We often, uh, we go the full, the full hog with our waves. Here's another, here's another punter. Ready? Go. Yep. We got two fingers off the wheel that time, so. Yep. This sidestep I'm pretty sure is the factory Toyota sidestep. Uh, we might get some better clearance occasionally if we didn't have it on, but it makes it really easy to step up to the roof rack and of course just getting into the car. So they're really good, I think, you know, handy to have. Up on the roof, um, we've got a, what, what is it? Monster four wheel drive, what's, what's the brand? Iron Man. Yes. Yep. An Ironman 4x4, three quarter length tradesman style rack with a mesh floor and it suits us to a T. I really like the tradesman style um, racks because you can butt things up against it, you can hold onto it while you're up there, it just seems a bit more safer and a bit more easy to use and you're never going to have things overhanging the sides if you butt things up against it. I think not having the ends on, i.e., you know, like if it was a full basket rack, I think you limit yourself because you can't go down to Bunnings and pick up long lengths of wood and you lose some of the versatility there. It's got to be three quarters because the Grandi, Grande, whatever you want to call it, Grandi, maybe in Australia, we had to get the three quarter length because one of the conditions once we bought the car from my wife, sorry, Tal, uh, was that. Um, the sunroof needed to have an unobstructed view outwards. So I think it's not too bad. It suits the vehicle being three quarters. And I think you could argue it's a bit more aerodynamic as the wind comes up and over when you're at speed. The Grande was the top of the line model and the extra features I like are the extra safety features, the dual airbags up the front, as well as improved traction control technology. Other features include the electric seats, the sunroof, and the metallic paint with the dual color accents. Many people would say that the chic brown leather trim of 2001 doesn't suit the Australian Outback, but I reckon it adds character. When we got the car, it had a no brand roof rack on it and they decided as well to have a three quarter length one, but it was a full basket. And uh, then when we were on the Gibb River Road, halfway across, uh, all the mounts apart from uh, basically one on one side, there were six of them, had sheared through. And so we couldn't fit everything in the car without the roof rack. And so we literally crawled at five kilometers an hour down the rest of the Gibb River Road, across the Pentecost and into Kununurra. ARB in Kununurra didn't have um, the mounting shoe pieces that, that worked. So we had to buy what they had. They had a basically like a, um, single cab ute rack um, and that that's what we ended up buying and putting on so we had like an even smaller rack here for quite a while and it wasn't until recently when we got back well after we got back that we we bought this Ironman rack um, the Ironman it's made of steel and it was the cheapest and also the lightest and uh, if I had my time again I'd probably get the ARB rack I reckon I got home and when I got up on the rack to get my, to try and lower down our old rack, which I'd taken back as they replaced it, I stood up on this one and I reckon as soon as I stood on it, I could feel the steel bend. So I'll put it up on screen. Tell me if you can see a slight banana in that, um, in that roof bar. Um, I was pretty disappointed to be honest. So I think these are made to a price. They're light for a reason. I would have thought it would be able to be able to hold my weight in the center at least yeah it doesn't fill me with confidence so next time i'll probably get an arb rack yeah. if you're enjoying this video or you've seen a couple of my other videos and like what you see i'd appreciate you subscribing to my channel 
I'm trying to build a community of like-minded people and I'd love to hear from you. Up uh, on this side, we've got a shower awning. We've got the quick pitch shower awning in the PVC bag. Didn't really occur to me to get one of these until really when our daughter was born. Um, two reasons, one is it gives you somewhere to change. So if we're just going to the beach or even you know somewhere fairly busy, pull this thing out and you can get changed and get dry, you can do what you need to do. Um, and it, and it, that's really handy if you've got, in my experience, females traveling with you. It's sort of a comfort that, that people like to have and is one of the barriers for people getting out and going camping and exploring. So they're pretty light. They're really easy to set up. I think they're a good idea. And the, sorry, the third reason is a lot of places in Australia now are demanding that you bring in a chemical toilet. Um, so you need to have a place that you can privately do your business. And so it fulfills that need as well. Kind of like the Snow Peak Fire Pit, which you've heard me talk a lot about as being the original. I understand that Quick Pitch kind of made the original shower tent awning. They're a South African brand. I guess you could say I was influenced by some popular YouTubers as to get this brand, but I'm really happy with it and um, I think it's going to last ages. So, yeah, great buy. Got to fly on my nose. We bought the Grey Dingo at the start of 2017 for 11 grand neat. I'd say it's worth a bit more than that now. We bought it purposefully for the big trip that I keep talking about where we drove from Melbourne to Perth, sort of up to Broome, through the Kimberley to Darwin, hung around up there and we came back down through the middle of Australia. We've made some absolutely awesome memories in this vehicle. And prior to owning this vehicle, I never understood folks that had sort of that, that strong sentimental attachment to their to their cars and four-wheel drives but i certainly understand that now because i feel very much attached to this vehicle it's been good to us too all the things that have gone wrong with it um, have feel like they've been external factors on the car rather than intrinsic issues with the car for example on the on the trip our roof rack sheared off um, the starter motor got waterlogged which we knew kind of knew about but took a chance on and probably should have done change proactively it was filling with water when we were going through water crossings picked up a bad batch of fuel that knocked us around and also had to change a fuel filter um, which yeah we kept on sending us to limp mode and we were losing power so all relatively minor stuff in the scheme of things so we're really grateful that we've got a reliable vehicle like that we're looking at doing another trip like that when the kids are sort of primary school age and maybe even taking 12 to 18 months and doing a full lap of Australia and seeing what we want to see. I've got, I had in mind prior to COVID that a, maybe a 100 series Land Cruiser would be a more suitable vehicle for that, given we'll, I guess we'll have to tow a small trailer at least of some kind. At the time, you know, even the high end, higher range price of 50 to 70 grand you could get a pretty good kind of late model 100 series 0506 um, that relatively low kilometers that i could deck out how we want and really really um, you know customize the car how we want sort of it was a blank canvas looking on carsales.com.au now there's basically no good examples of low kilometers low modif like with limited modifications there's basically nothing there and Everything's done at least 300,000 K and, um, you know, and they're wanting between 70 and 90 grand for them. So the market is absolutely on its head at the moment. And I'm afraid that there may not be another 100 series down the track, a good example when we want to buy one. So we've kind of got at the back of our, our mind now, maybe we give the great Ingo a really good birthday, basically replace the engine and just try to keep it running as long as we can and then just start enjoying doing some of those things like the suspension and, and modifying a little bit better to suit our needs. Now that I'm doing filming on the road, I really need a better power setup. The old AGM's on its way out. Um, so probably a lithium setup is on the cards very, very soon. Let me know what you think. 
could this be a vehicle that lasts another five to 10 years and still go another lap around Australia, given it's already done nearly 500,000 K? What do you reckon? So at the back end, the tow bar is a genuine Toyota. So I reckon it was there since new, some 400,000 kilometers or 21 years ago. Uh, we've never used the tow electronics, but when we got the 12 volt work done for the battery, they just um, made sure that everything was um, sweet with that. So when we need a tow, hopefully it'll be all good. At some point it got a reverse camera fitted, but uh, it wasn't working when we got it and the wiring's still in there loosely, but one day we'll look at doing that. Now with young kids and um, you know a pretty tall car, it seems like a smart thing to do just for getting out of the driveway even. So if we replace the head unit inside, we definitely get this camera fixed up as well. Another thing you could say we were influenced uh, by some popular YouTubers on is this camp cover um, wheel bag, which is a South African product as well. This canvas it, um, really, I think, comes into a league of its own in terms of durability and, and toughness and uh, ruggedness. You've really got to buy one of these products and then feel it to, to feel what, what I mean. But um, it's uh, definitely an awesome, awesome product. I like how it sits flush against the tire. It looks fairly neat and it's got um, the basically three compartments in it and it fits the fire pit which is also really handy. So we use it for rubbish, we use it for the fire pit, and we use it for dirty clothes and dirty stuff as we need to. This sticker up here, one of the only ones I'm happy to have on there is LJL Motors, my mechanic. Um, Luke, who is a good friend of mine, is also a very talented mechanic and I'm very grateful for his assistance with this car. He's always really helpful. So these mud flaps, they are, have you ever seen mud flaps like this? When we did our four-wheel drive course years ago, Ron, the instructor from Mountaintop Experience, he said to us, are we trying to sweep the ground as we go along? Which I think is a pretty appropriate joke. I think they're just meant to be an extender because the car's been lifted, but they kind of look a bit goofy, don't they? She got the handbrake on? She got the handbrake on, she's rolling. These small weather shields we've got over the main windows, we just got them on eBay. Can be really nice in winter time to have the windows down a little bit but not let the, the rain in. Um, yeah, I think they're a nice touch and keep the windows a bit cleaner as well. And lastly, on the outside, I think we're just about there, just got a snorkel, which is a no-name brand generic one, which was on the car when we bought it. If you're doing remote touring, then having a snorkel, I think, is a really good insurance policy. Even if you're not planning to go through, find big water to go through, you know, you'll pull up somewhere to a, a creek and you'll just wish that you, you had one for that peace of mind for when you come unstuck eventually, I guess. So, yeah, setting up a touring vehicle, I think snorkel is a really good idea. Most four-wheel drive walkthroughs you'll find on YouTube, people are showing off uh, extravagant draw setups and whatnot. You can see it's pretty bare. When we went, did our big trip, uh, my friend Tyson helped me knock up a set of drawers, uh, made of plywood and we painted it. Worked really well. We just tied it down with uh, the existing tie down points and also the rails for the third row of seats. It was fairly agricultural, but it did the job really well. On the side here, we've got um, the 12 volt plugs, two SIG sockets, as well as an angle socket tucked away uh, in that little alcove in the side there. So at the moment, we need this car to cart our camp kitchen as well as general cargo during the week. It doesn't make sense for us to have the drawers as handy as it is on the occasions we go camping. Having this bare canvas to work with each time we need to go somewhere is what suits our family right now. The tie downs for the baby seat also prohibit you using the full um, size of the boot. So if you had drawers or anything in there permanent, it wouldn't, wouldn't make it or you'd have to work out how to tie it down to it, I suppose, which isn't a big deal, but we kind of like, while the kids are young, we'll keep this as a bare canvas and then 
look at what we need to do in a couple of years time. Fire extinguisher, exceptionally important to carry with you when remote traveling. Um, we've just got our recovery gear, uh, compressor and recovery gear in sort of heavy duty bags stacked at the back there. We'd rearrange that if we were carrying a couple of full jerry cans with us um, when we go camping, but they tend to stay in there. Um, and the only other recovery gear we usually carry is max tracks up on the roof. One thing we've looked at doing is putting in a cargo barrier, but it seems they're hard to come by now for the 90 series Prado. So if anyone's got any ideas or knows of anyone selling one or how I can get one put in, I'd appreciate your help. Yeah. We're going to take off our seat belts and wind the windows down in case we sink the ship. Here we go. These child seats take up so much real estate and it's going to be even more fun when there's two of them in here. Down here we've got our main first aid kit in the red bag under the driver's seat and we also have uh, one of my lockdown projects was putting together a survival grab bag um, so I will make a video on this at some point but that's there as well sort of easily in reach from any passenger in the car. Apart from that nothing exciting going on in the in the back seats. You'll notice that I've put first aid stickers and the fire extinguisher sticker at the closest door to where I store them. And I think that's a really nice touch that might be really helpful one day at a time you least expect. I know it's a requirement on a lot of commercial vehicles and required by law, but why not do it on your own vehicle so that in an emergency, people are able to help as quick as they can. Up the front here, it's all pretty stock. At some point the factory head unit was replaced and they've put a aftermarket stereo and a bit of a storage thing in there. Uh, we had to put, because the, the leather's starting to wear, we put some uh, covers on. These are just from Aldi. They're starting to show their, show their age, so we'll probably replace those soon. The seat belts were starting to fray and get a bit scratchy on the edges. Don't know how it passed a roadworthy when we got it, but it did. Um, so I've put these black covers on as well to make it a bit more comfortable. What can I say? Uh, broken GoPro mount. I've just got to work out how to get that off without damaging the vinyl. Uh, sunglasses holder. Someone added at some point. But really not too much to it. The little UHF is down here at the bottom. Like I said, very cheap um, system. We keep the PLB in the center console here. I actually made a video about these units and it's one of my least performing or underperforming videos despite the hours and hours it took me. So if you're interested in getting a personal locating beacon, my video is outstanding. It's a bit unpolished, but I'm really proud of it. So go ahead and check that out at your leisure. Uh, and also in the bottom here on the other part of the center console, we've just got the winch stuff so the steering wheels looking a bit tattered too again not sure how it passed a roadworthy because it hasn't got much worse in the time we've got it if anyone's got any recommendations for a good steering wheel cover uh, shoot them through um, I've looked at a few and they all seem fairly cheap to me I'd want to put something on there that's pretty nice and durable the having the two tanks two fuel tanks is really handy in this car so it's got 159 litres total uh, 100 plus another 59 I think it is um, you know it doesn't do that well on fuel unloaded probably 14 litres per hundred fully loaded you know well over 15 17 that kind of thing sometimes um, if we got it tuned and 
whatnot, maybe we could do better than that. But yeah, for the amount we use it and what we use it for now, no need to look at doing that sort of stuff. Um, it's got a factory center diff lock, but no other differential locks. You know, maybe we'd consider putting in either the front or rear at some point, but again, what we need it to do right now, um, it's perfectly capable. few other gadgets I thought I'd show you. We always keep a dustpan and brush on, on this side. Can't have too many of these when you're camping. We've got a drifter make these. It's just a boot liner sleeve with a clear, clear side. We put all our electrical cables in there for charging stuff so that it's all um, tucked away nicely. And then we've got another little boot liner thing in here under this seat, which has just got basic uh, first aid stuff so when we don't need to hoe into the proper proper first aid kit you know painkillers elastoplast deep heat insect um, insect stuff burn stuff you know just general stuff um, we've got a little stash of that as well especially important with young families and just being that little bit more prepared for whatever might come up as you go along in the glove box usually it's just knickknacks but um dad got me this it's a plastic spatula or rubber spatula and that's for chiseling off frost and ice of a morning if you need to really really good tool for this um i probably should just market my own and sell them and make a fortune because there's nothing really like this i think on the market that or not marketed as a tool for that so that's a handy tip if you can find one of these Although dad went up to himself and he found this stuff called, made by Bowden's own. It's, um, it's an alcohol and it basically reacts with, with water and um, heats up and evaporates the windscreen and then doesn't leave any streaking. So yeah, to try it, but I reckon um, dad's outdone himself on that, but this is still a bloody good tool. If you want to hear about anything I've discussed, our big trip, this vehicle, our plans, any questions on anything I've pointed out, please feel free to ask and I appreciate your advice in return. A big thank you to my wife for holding the camera, now 34 weeks pregnant, that's quite a feat. Thanks Tel. That's it for now, out there with Dan signing out and Grey Dingo out.